In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and then morning, and the first day. This first chapter refers to some kind of light, which suddenly separated day from night. So here we are facing some small paradox, but what does it really refer to? It refers to the upper light, which is the upper force, the quality of which being bestowal and love. Absolute bestowal and absolute love. It is to say the force is absolute. For itself, it does not have any necessities, except only give positively, bestowal and fulfill. This force, due to this quality, to give, to fulfill, and to love, this force created the creature. And what could it create? What is this creature? If this is a force of giving, it created a force of receiving, the desire to receive. The flux of emitted heat depends on the type of body which is emitting the heat, and in particular on the amount of incident radiation which is absorbed and the amount which is reflected by the body. A perfect black body is a body that absorbs any wave of radiated heat that falls upon it. A model of this type of body is a box, the inside of which is painted black. The box has a hole in it. All the radiation that passes through the hole is then absorbed by the inside of the box. The principle of conservation of energy informs us that a perfect black body can emit as much thermal energy as it absorbs. Bodies which are not perfectly black will reflect part of the radiation which is incident upon them. Therefore, they will emit lower energy. The relationship which describes the heat flux of the emitted photons was derived in the 19th century. The number of emitted thermal radiation photons depends on the temperature of the body raised to the power of four. So the flux of the heat emitted by a perfect black body is equal to the Stefan constant sigma multiplied by the temperature raised to the fourth power. Most of your superconductors are not organic. They're inorganic. And then you don't conduct electricity at room temperature. Superconduction in these inorganic systems are very, very, are done when it's very, very cold. Give me examples. Minus what you're talking about. 400 and some degrees K. Okay. You have to get down very, very low in temperature in order for electrons to travel through a metal object. Roy comes from the Latin real or real. Real or real. According to the Enuma Elis which consists of seven tablets in an ancient Babylonian narrative telling the story of man's creation. It appears that the Anunnaki, also called the Anu, are the creators of mankind and that man's purpose is to serve the gods. These beings were not from this world, but were from the heavens. They can be found throughout Sumerian culture in writings, drawings, and statues, some of which portray the Anunnaki holding a holy grail which is supposed to depict a special bloodline they've created. What's also interesting to note is that ancient biblical text mentions an offspring called the Nephilim, which inhabited the earth in the early days of mankind. Just as the Enuma Elis depicts the story of man being created by the gods, the book of Genesis also tells a creation story and mentions unearthly beings called the Nephilim. Genesis 6-4 states, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. Who or what were these sons of God that had children with the daughters of men? Could this be the bloodline that ancient Sumerians were also referring to? Claims he has translated them as 
those from heaven came. Many scholars claim their interpretation is those of royal blood or those of princely offspring. One friend and colleague of mine was Lawrence Gardner. He was tracking the whole significance of certain bloodlines going back into Mesopotamia. I was encountering exactly the same information coming in to my investigations of an alien presence on this planet and throughout the solar system. We found that we met at sort of a same point, and that was that in Mesopotamia, that all of the Anunnaki were supposed to be reptilian, and that the reptilian biology had blood that was dominated by copper, and that they literally had blue colored blood. We have red because we have an iron dominant blood. So, our discussion from his history and my trying to get into it through aliens that have been dominating the earth was that the blue blood reptilians of mesopotamia led to a group called the merovingians and the merovingians tie later in the timeline directly to france germany and that area of europe because for some reason that bloodline the blue bloods went to Europe, Lawrence Gardner and other people's work coming through royalty, blue blood, tie this connection between the reptilians, Merovingians in Mesopotamia, and they were literally a reptilian blue blood. to know that the word mel means honey is because one of the there's a word called honian so h-o-n-i-a-n and remember vowels are movable removable and interchangeable the word honian means to abuse or revile now there are people out there that revile us because of something that we have that they don't and as such they have chosen to abuse us regularly because they're jealous of what we have that they do not have which by the way they had a few hundred years to officially acquire what we have meaning while we were asleep and generously giving our genetic strand of cta also called dna right. while we were in our unconscious unaware unawake state of self-hatred to the point that we hated being melanin rich so badly that we gave away our genetics. All of that to say, while we were in this self-hatred mode, and believe me when I tell you, we are coming out of it now. Opportunity for these people that have honian uh, uh, revile and abuse for us to actually get grafted back into the melanin rich family and become melanin rich themselves meaning they still have their family name but they would have the melanin richness that makes them one with nature that um there's a word called me meliorate and the reason i'm giving you the definite because i always try to start out with words and definitions the reason i'm giving you definitions is because it all starts with words for me as you announced m-e-l is the same as m-e-r Vowels are removable and interchangeable because L and R are one and the same letter. Technically, they are uh, uh, the same and they can be interchanged. So M-E-L is the same as M-E-R. And if you drop the E, you have M-L, which means the M-R. M-R goes back to more. Individuals that don't comprehend this, that the word male also means, like I said, it means dark, strong, great, numerous. It means honey. It also means mana and darkish and back in the day i told people that mana means supernatural force and power you comprehend i'm saying all this because i want my people to understand something the word melon like the watermelon melon 
One of the definitions of melon is grapevine. A melon is a grapevine or a branch. That's what they're talking about when they get in your so-called Christian Holy Bible about getting grafted back into the true vine and becoming part of the real branch of reality. But our people want to live in this fake illusion with these people that want to stay stuck in their fake illusion. The Middle East, Samaria. Talking about the Mesopotamian, mm -hmm. Chaldean cultures, Onis in the Greek represents this ancient Assyrian Dagon or deity so figure. It's, it's interesting, he had a fish form, but out of his head was another head that was a human head, and then his feet were also human feet, and uh, he spoke like a human he actually could speak like a human so this was like part of the this is from dr Herdeck's book beyond darwinism other Let's, cultures the greek for example uh used the sign of the dolphin head and if you look very early at the shape of the midterra or the hat of catholic and greek bishops in the ancient near east they have a hat symbolic of the head of the dolphin which represents a higher type of cosmic connectedness beyond the mythological symbol with the deities of the lower heavens. He invigorated, we'll say, the wisdom and knowledge that had once been lost to this planet the, due to the flood. The Interesting, Ea, or Enki, which many of you people, many people have read about, Sumerian is identified also with Oannes of Barosis. And he also had fist and you can see the little body of the fish here next to this very interesting uh, symbol of Persian deity or Enki is that he was also identified with the southern heavens and the star Sirius. Does this ring a bell to anybody? So for hundreds of years we've been telling you and now you have to keep in mind that we took away any other god that you might have through force through fear, through pain, through uh, uh, any means necessary. So now I'm going to give you a God, but I'm going to do that in a way that is going to further me. So I'm going to give you a God that looks like me, so that when you bow down to that God, you bow down to is the most abundant element in the universe. Carbon-12 is also one of the five elements that make up the human DNA. Number of man, or number of the beast. It is the number of carbon-12, which is the basis of man's physical body, which ties him to the physical universe. This is especially significant, when we understand, what transmutation awaits this carbon-12, which will bestow man such superhuman powers that will make every technological advancement till date, completely redundant. It is now time to reveal the secret of all secrets. The secret of alchemy. The secret of the philosopher's stone, that which transmutes, in a symbolic sense, lead, to gold. The secret of the elixir of life. The secret of amritha, or ambrosia, the nectar of immortality. The secret of something we shall label, ascension since its primary function is to aid the coming ascension to form a portal into the higher dimension the secret of carbon 7 